Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Uh, this is, of course, Kerbal's space program, and we are heading to Titan in Realism Overhaul. Realism Overhaul, of course, makes everything real scale. It makes rockets work like real rockets, and it adds all the real planets. Now, the reason I'm going to Titan, as you might have guessed, is because we just had the finalists for the latest round of the NASA New Frontiers program. The finalists were whittled down from a rather large field, but uh, one of them was Dragonfly and the other was Caesar. This is, of course, a simulation of Dragonfly implemented in the game. If you've been paying attention to the news, then you probably know what is going to be inside this re-entry shield. But uh, let's talk about Caesar first. That is the Comet Astrobiology Exploration Sample Return Mission. And it's essentially something very similar to OSIRIS-REx. But instead of visiting an asteroid, it's going to visit Comet 67P Churyumov Gerasimenko, which you may remember was the comet which was visited by Rosetta. So, I mean, most of the mission visualization looks very similar. It's going to reach down close to the surface, grab a sample, and eventually return it. I think the return date is going to be something like 2035 if it gets selected. You see, there's two finalists, and only one will actually get to go all the way. There are also two other missions which were selected for further study but didn't get the $4 million that uh, Dragonfly or Caesar got. That was uh, Vichy, which is the Venus in situ composition investigations. That's a spacecraft which would, of course, land on Venus and do some investigation. And I believe the other one is the Enceladus Life Signatures and Habitability, ELSA. You see, the New Frontiers program is essentially a call for mission concepts from third parties. And for the fourth uh, round, they basically asked for people that were interested in comet surface return, a lunar pole sample return, investigation of ocean worlds, Saturn probes, a Trojan tour, or Venus landers. And obviously, the two that were selected, one was an investigation of Titan, which qualifies as an ocean world, and the other is a cometary sample return. Now, Titan has, of course, already been visited by the Huygens probe. Oh, yeah, um, I built this in real solar system and had some issues with jettisoning the heat shield. Uh, <laughs> I had to improvise here. Pardon me, I'm presuming that that's why they get $4 million to investigate such problems and make sure they don't happen. Uh, although they will be playing with something a little more accurate than Kerbal Space Program. So Huygens was the uh, ESA contribution to the Cassini mission, and uh, it basically landed on Titan, got some pictures, did some analysis of winds and things like this. Dragonfly is going to go one step further. It is going to launch a nuclear-powered flying robot. Basically, it's going to be an octocopter, or sorry, a dual quadcopter. And the idea is it's going to be able to fly around from one location to another. Now, obviously, we've had probes that have investigated planetary surfaces and they've used wheels to move around. But on Titan, the low gravity and the very thick atmosphere means that flying takes something like one thirty second of the energy that you require on Earth. I mean, it's it would be theoretically possible if you had wings strapped to your arms to fly on Titan. The New Frontiers missions are the kind of top-tier third-party missions that NASA supports. The budgets are going to be about a billion dollars, and unlike the Discovery-class missions, they will have access to radioisotope nucleothermal generators. So what, the, what Dragonfly will do is it will have an RTG attached, and it'll fly from one place to another, land, and then over a whole Titan day, which is something like 14 Earth days, it will trickle charge its batteries, and at the appropriate time, the probe will take off and fly to a new spot. It uses a quadcopter design with two motors on each corner, so that if one gets damaged, it can still fly. So they can handle a couple of failures on this system, which of course is important since they're going to be a long way from home and have no way to send out a repair person. Previous winners of the New Frontiers program uh, are in New Horizons, which visited Pluto, Juno, which is currently at Jupiter, and OSIRIS-REx, which is currently on its way to asteroid Bennu, hopefully to return to Earth one day with a sample of the asteroid. 
the lower tier of NASA supported programs are uh, the Discovery class and that includes things like Kepler, Dawn, Stardust, we are looking forward to Lucy and Psyche and uh, Mars Insight which is launching in March. Again these missions come from third parties and are funded by NASA but they're cheaper and they don't have access to some of the technologies such as radioisotope thermoelectric generators. Uh, this one incidentally, this design I've got has folding landing gear which is not like the landing gear they're proposing to use on, uh, on the actual Dragonfly. It'll use more like skid landing gear if it flies because uh, the reason I had to change it over is because I needed a folding landing gear system to fit it inside the uh, aeroshell for landing. The third class of NASA supported interplanetary exploration missions are the flagship class and those are uh, those include the Mars Science Laboratory and it'll include Mars 2020. Obviously in the past this included, included things like Cassini and Voyager. There's also the Explorer program which tends to be more orbiting observatories and things like that. Uh, those missions are slated to cost less than 120 million. But there look, I've actually made a pretty good flying uh, quadcopter for Titan. Obviously the real thing would have to be a little smarter about how it's landing since we've seen close-ups of the surface of Titan with small rounded rocks and things like that. Uh, you might also have noticed that I've landed near some features that I want to investigate. I see a little black spot out this way. Could it be a rock or something? Well, uh, as I got closer, closer I began to realise, wait, that's actually a shadow. That was a shadow from my heat shield and aeroshell which are still falling through the thick titanium atmosphere. So instead, let's check out these lakes. They will, they will be hydrocarbon lakes on Titan, and while you see some flickering due to Z-fighting, uh, I'm gonna say that we do expect some sort of changing of, uh, you know, lake shapes and sizes due to seasonal variations, but not, <laughs> not as quick as we're seeing it in this due to the glitch. It will be something that takes years to happen, we hope. So yeah, while I am super interested in what comets are made of, I'm gonna say my heart is with the nuclear-powered flying robot set being sent to Titan because all those words are kinda cool and there is nothing not exciting about all of those words when put together in a sentence. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.